did the Easter Sunday holiday come from? Many believe that it signifies the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah, but does it? He said that he would be in the grave three days and three nights. So is it possible to get three days and three nights from Friday noon to Sunday morning? Only if you're using some funny math. The numbers do not add up. And Christians continue to ignore this glaring detail without question. The fact is, Messiah, our Mashiach, was in the grave for three days and three nights, just like he said. Zechariah 12.10 says, They will look on me whom they pierced. So what happened? The Roman Catholic Church changed the days designated for Passover to invent Easter. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you why and how they did it. Listen to this from Exodus 12, 23 through 27. For the Most High will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lentil, and on the two doorposts, the Most High will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land, which the Most High will give you just as he promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall be... When your children shall say to you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Most High, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. The Passover, or Pesach, was to be a memorial for the children of Israel and their descendants to remind them how the Most High delivered them out of Egypt. No other nation has this testimony. Changing Passover to Easter was a key component of the replacement theology doctrine. When they changed it, they erased the meaning behind the feast day. They stole our heritage. Pasak was a significant event for us, and there's a reason why the Gentiles wanted us to forget. Listen to what it says in Exodus 12:14. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Most High throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. So when we remember and honor this feast day, it serves as our memorial day of how the Most High delivered our ancestors out of bondage. By his might, he forced Egypt to let us go. This memorial day can be celebrated by other nations, but it does not have the same significance for them. They were never delivered from the bondage of Egypt. This is what Messiah was celebrating with the disciples before his death, burial, and resurrection. The revelation is that he is the Passover lamb to not only deliver us out of physical bondage, but he delivers us from the bondage of sin. Both are to be remembered. I want you to listen to a message I did two years ago explaining why the Catholic Church changed our holy day and why their numbers do not line up. It's called Easter Sunday Myth. Christ said three days and three nights. Hopefully, you will share it with those who still cling to the Easter Sunday myth. Take a listen. We see here in Leviticus 23, 5, it says, On the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. So what is Passover? 
The Hebrew word is Pesach. It commemorates the emancipation of the Israelites from slavery in ancient Egypt. So in Hebrew, it means to pass over because the death angel passed over the homes of the Israelites, but the firstborn of the Egyptians died. So the death angel knew that whenever he saw the blood applied to the doorpost of a home, he needed to pass over that house. So now we have Passover and we have Easter. One is biblical, the other has pagan roots. If you're going to choose to remember this time, then choose to remember Passover, not Easter. Okay, so in my previous videos, uh, Deception in the Church, Parts 1 and 2, I shared with you how the traditional story of Easter being that the Messiah was crucified on Friday at noon, and he got up from the grave on Easter Sunday morning, is a lie perpetuated by the Roman Catholic Church. A careful study of the Bible shows that Messiah was in the grave three days and three nights, just like he said. And you cannot get three days and three nights from Friday noon to Sunday morning. I don't care how you try to manipulate the days. If you can count, you automatically know that's a lie. So why are you choosing to believe a lie? The resurrection is a significant event for believers, and the traditions we've adopted has tainted the gospel. How has it tainted it? Because anyone who can count to three know that you can't get three days and three nights from Friday noon to Sunday morning. So today, I want to show you what's at the root of this lie. Let's look at why Easter is celebrated in the spring. All right, it says, why is Easter celebrated in the spring? According to the Bible, Jesus Christ's death and resurrection occurred at the time of the Jewish Passover, which was celebrated on the first full moon. When was it celebrated? On the first full moon, following the vernal equinox. But this soon led to Christians celebrating Easter on different dates. At the end of the second century, some congregations celebrated Easter on the day of the Passover, while others celebrated it on the following Sunday. So, what happened? In 325 CE, the Council of Nicaea established, they determined, the Roman Catholic Church determined that Easter would be held on the first Sunday. Do you see the switch? First, it was celebrated on the first full moon, which meant that it, whatever that day fell on, that was the day of celebration. The Roman Catholic Church changed it to say it would be held on the first Sunday after the full moon, not on, but after the full moon, occurring on or after the vernal equinox. However, not all Christians observe Easter according to this Gregorian calendar. Most of the Orthodox Christians still observe Easter under the Julian calendar. All right, let's keep going. This is an article coming out of Notre Dame. The author is Panos and Soclis. Why is Easter celebrated on different Sundays in the Eastern Orthodox and Western Catholic and Protestant churches? So it says the date of Easter Sunday. In 2008, 
Easter Sunday was celebrated on March 23rd by the Western churches, but on April 27th, over a month later, by most Eastern churches. Note that in 2008, the Jewish Passover was on April 20th. So you notice they would not do it on April 20th, which was the actual Passover. Instead, they moved it to a week later. Why is that? They didn't want it to be on the actual day of Passover. So it says in 2010 and 2011, the date of Easter were the same for all on April 4th and April 24th, respectively. But look at the days. So in 2008, the Eastern churches celebrated on 27 April, the Western on 23 March. The day of Passover was actually April 20th. All right, let's look at 2010. You see that the Western and the Eastern uh, churches celebrated it on 4 April. But when was the actual day of Passover? 30 March. Why the discrepancy? The article goes on to say the Western and Eastern churches calculate Easter dates using the same or very similar rules. Why then do these differences occur? There are two main reasons. The first has to do with the differences between the Julian and the Gregorian calendars discussed above, and the second with the different methodologies, the methodology used by the Catholic Church to calculate the date of the first full moon after the vernal equinox. So then what is Easter? You're going to see that this was really a day to worship the sun god, S-U-N. Let's keep going. All right, so I want to share some information with you that you may not have known. And it's coming from the writings of a man named Bede, as some call him Saint Bede. But it's in reference to the Anglo-Saxon paganism festivals and rituals. So it says the regular practice of the pagan religion in Anglo-Saxon times involved several seasonal festivals. Nearly everything we know about the religious festivals of the pagan Anglo-Saxons come from a book called De Temporum Rationae, which means the reckoning of time. It's written by a Christian monk known to us as the Venerable Bede. In his book, Bede describes the yearly calendar of the Anglo-Saxon people, which usually consisted of 12 lunar months, much like our current calendars. So he talks about some of the the festivals, and one, one of the main ones was called Mother Night, which is synonymous with Christmas. This was about December 25th, and this was a Yule festival. It was known um, to be about decorating with evergreen branches, the burning of a Yule log, and a feast centered around a boar's head. All right, another one in February involved baking special cakes that had symbolic significance, all right? And these cakes were offered to the pagan gods. There was another one in March. This was a sacrifice made to the goddess, Heretta. But the more important spring festival appears to have been Eoster month in April, a festival dedicated to the goddess Eostra. And this was a celebration of spring and new life. It involved flowers, dancing, and feasting. So they also had other festivals, but I wanted to tie this in with what we're going to, what I'm going to be showing you next. Let's keep going. 
All right, this definition is taken from the New Unger's Bible Dictionary, a very popular um, dictionary that a lot of religious scholars used. And it's giving us the definition for Easter. It says the Passover, which see, and so translated in every passage except in the King James Virgin, Version, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So it's talking about the word Easter used in Acts 12, 4. It says in the earlier English versions, Easter had been frequently used as the translation of Pasha. At the last revision, Passover was substituted in all passages but this. So where you have the word Easter in Acts 12, 4, that word was always Passover. So let's see where the word Easter comes from. It says the word Easter is of Saxon origin. Eastra, the goddess of spring, in whose honor sacrifices were offered about Passover time each year. By the 8th century, Anglo-Saxons had adopted the name to designate the celebration of Christ's resurrection. Let's look at some other dictionaries. Here we, sat, we have Easton's. Bible Dictionary, Easter, originally a Saxon word, denoting a goddess of the Saxons in honor of whom sacrifices were offered about the time of Passover. Hence the name came to be given to the festival of the resurrection of Christ, which occurred at the time of the Passover. In the early English versions, this word was frequently used as the translation of the Greek Pasha, the Passover. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, Easter. The English word comes from the Anglo-Saxon Eastra or Estera, a Teutonic goddess to whom sacrifices was offered in April. The word does not properly occur in scripture, although the King James Version has it in Acts 12, 4, where it stands for Passover. <laughs> let's keep going. All right, let's take a look at this article, Origin of Easter from Pagan Festivals and Christianity to Bunnies and Chocolate Eggs. And this was uh, written by Penny Travers in 2017 rabbits and eggs as ancient symbols of new life many of the pagan customs associated with the celebration of spring eventually became absorbed within christianity as symbols of the resurrection of jesus eggs as a symbol of new life became a common people's explanation of the resurrection after the chill of the winter months nature was coming to life again this is from Professor Cusack. All right, it says, During the Middle Ages, people began decorating eggs and eating them as a treat following Mass on Easter Sunday after fasting through Lent. This is actually something that still happens, especially in Eastern European countries like Poland. The custom of decorating hard-boiled eggs or blown eggs is still a very popular folk custom. Rabbits and hares are also associated with fertility and were symbols linked to the goddess Eostre. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Eostre. The first association of the rabbit with Easter, according to Professor Cusack, was a mention of the Easter hare. And a book by a German professor of medicine, George Frank von Frankenau, published in 1722. Let's keep going. I want to share some information about uh, the holidays of witches and warlocks, and I'm just going to 
share a few of them. It says, witches and warlocks have a right to enjoy holidays too. There are eight holidays on the Wiccan calendar. And I'm going to focus on, on these two here. The winter solstice, which is December 21st, also known as Yule. This is the shortest day of the year and conversely the longest night. Witches and warlocks celebrate the birth of the sun god. All right, it says Wiccan celebrations include Yule logs, sound familiar? Yule trees and mistletoes. Sounds a lot like Christmas, huh? All right, this is another one on Ostera, March 21st. This day on the witch's calendar is the spring equinox. The German goddess Ostera, Ostra, goddess of fertility is honored. Let's keep going. This article was taken from the Huffington Post. It says religion. This was from March of 2015. Ostera 2015 facts and traditions of the Wiccan spring equinox celebration. The spring equinox in the northern hemisphere falls on March. I'm sorry, on Friday, March 20 this year, marking the time when the sun passes over the celestial equator. Wiccans and other neo pagans observe the day of Ostera, a festival that celebrates the season's change from dark winter to brightening spring. It says Ostera or Eostra is an Anglo Saxon goddess who represents dawn. As a spring goddess, she oversees the budding plants and burgeoning fertility of the earth. The horned god, sometimes envisioned as the god Pan, symbolized the festive enjoyment of nature through hunting and dancing. Similar to those observed as at Easter, symbols for Ostera include eggs, rabbits, flowers, and seeds. We'll keep going. All right, this information comes from the Old Farmer's Almanac. And it says, in Christian calendars, the first full moon of spring is called the Paschal Full Moon. Easter is observed on the Sunday after the Paschal Full Moon. So what happens when the full moon and spring equinox occur on the same day? It says, generally, if the full moon occurs on the same day as the spring equinox, Easter is observed on the subsequent Sunday. Remember, it always has to be on a Sunday to honor the sun god. Let's keep going. This comes from Mark 7, 7 through 9. And in vain... They worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition. Let's finish up with this last scripture uh, found in Mark 7, 13. It's actually uh, the second part of a rebuke of the religious leaders where they were told that they were making the word of God of no effect through tradition. It says, which you have handed down and many such things you do. You see how he's telling them, you're making the gospel ineffective because of your traditions that you're passing down. And we have accepted these traditions to be true. We didn't study to show ourselves approved. How did this religion, this tradition of Easter come to be? 
It came from Babylon. They were worshiping the goddess of fertility. And they worshipped her in the spring because it's, they said she caused everything to grow. She was a goddess of reproduction. And this was done in her honor. So during the time of Constantine, the Roman Catholic Church decided to blend this day in with Passover. Ask yourself, what does a bunny have to do with the resurrection? Why is the focal point on the bunny and the eggs? Why is the focal point at Christmas Santa Claus and the toys and the gifts? These are pagan holidays that are masking as Christian or biblical holidays. This is why Easter is always on a Sunday. The celebration was a pagan holiday so that the Romans could continue worshiping their pagan gods. So now you know the truth. What are you going to do with it? I hope this information has been helpful. Like, share, subscribe, 